You might think that is that there's a fairness and a parity there, but there is isn't. The ingress into Mark Dunham, there's about 10 QCs on the police's side. The police have QC, the shooter have QC, the home office have QC, the police fed have QC, everybody has QC. And on the side of the victim, if you're lucky, if you're lucky, because you don't have to get legal aid for these cases, you have one QC and one junior. So there is no parity of arms. So what we did after the inquest into Mark Dunham, and we say that the inquest finding was perverse, I'm not going to go into it all now, but there's a video around there, it's called Witness B's Video. The only video, Witness B's last video in the minute he's heard the shots. So it's after the fact, not before the fact. But his video contains lots of interesting information. We found that the, 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 the video was taken by the BBC, they bought the video. Now get this, they bought the video, they paid for it. We don't know how much. But it was enough for the people who lived in that flat to disappear. They bought the video. We didn't ever see it until four years later when the inquest happened. They bought the video, and this is what they said in the inquest. We didn't look at it. We didn't look at it. We had this video, the video, the only video of the killing of this boy that sparks all of these uprisings and riots across the country, but believe us, we didn't know. We forgot we had it. And they paid for it, but they forgot they had it. As if they're going to pay for it before they look at it. The BBC, you've got to look and see what's there before you pay for it. It's not the reporter's going to pay for it. It's got to go through a chain of people. So they had the video, and in the video there's a gap. The gap, we say, at least four seconds, they could be more. And they use it, and IPCC then uses the video to defend their crazy position, which we'll get to. This board that you see here, so we, the family of Dublin, nobody who's taking us, they take them for a civil case. The police say we're not going to pay, we're not going to pay. So the lawyers get involved with this organisation called Forensic Architecture. Forensic architecture, they are groundbreaking digital technology experts. They hang out at the at, at Goldsmiths University and they're led by a professor. That man there to the right. They're led by a professor. This is serious stuff. And what we got forensic architecture to do was we asked them to help us to find a grain of truth in that desert of lies. And the desert of lies culminates at King Cross. So what you're seeing here is the statements of the police officers who were involved in the Mark Dunham. There were 11 professional officers there. Professional, all of them with a gun. All of them marksmen, all of them sharpshooters. Out of those 11 officers, only two have ever said that they saw Mark Duggan with a gun in his hand. See about that. 11 and only two say they see a gun in Dublin's hand. So here, what we've done is interrogate their testimony to the English. And anywhere you see that, this is where forensic architecture caught them in a contradiction. Right? All their testimony, there's nothing from me, there's no bias, there's no mum speaking, this just formal testimony. Plus, the whole lot of technologists that were employed by the Home Office and the IPCC to consider what happened to Dublin. These people are needed to know and change their mind what they say to In the inquest, they were told that they had to consider that Dublin had a gun in his hand. They couldn't consider anything else. So they said at the inquest, when asked, is it possible that after he could be shot, and I don't know if I clarify this, but the gun's found seven meters away from his body. So in the inquest, they ask a question, is it possible? And being nerd, they say, possible we're not wrong. And when we ask them the question now, we say to them, don't be, don't be limited by saying the gun's in the hand. What do you think? They say, we don't think you're going to possibly throw it. That's what they say to them. And we've gone back to the IOPC, 
were taken over from the IPCC mm -hmm. and said, we opened the investigation, and they're saying, no, we haven't got new evidence. Well, watch this. All of the contradictions that they have given here now lead us This model if he could describe the is a such 3D depiction based on using this what would this scene look like from the IP degrees of the Pentagon? Here is his view of a thousand of them done at hand. And what this video ultimately aims to show is that it was impossible that we've done the Pentagon and gone. I do not before the first shot. What this video shows is it impossible. Look, right? Is it impossible for them not to have seen the gun? What this video the shows shot. is he was killed, and ultimately the gun had to have been planted after. On Saturday, we're going to have threatening architecture in the theatre downstairs. And after the second show, and they're going to have the proper model. 3D goggles, virtual reality goggles, but a the human 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 goggles is not like what we see on the computer. And you can go to pick any police officer you want and see Our it. central vision is highly sensitive, sensitive to details. What we're showing here today While the periphery is more sensitive to the art, the result is impossible to and again, you look represent up, and that screen. So in order to simulate the now, unfortunately, we are going to finish it. On this wall here, that we're working at the moment, we're going to put a copy of the Gangs Matrix. Has anyone heard of the Gangs Matrix? Right. That each scenario, the required phone motion, would have been... The Gangs Matrix. Remember I showed you, I told you to keep an eye on that man called Boris Johnson. As Mayor of Man, London, Boris Johnson, Boris Johnson and his deputy mayor, Kit Morehouse, the and Stephen Greenlaw, created an full Operation Trident and said, made them into the... I cannot conceive of how Doug might have thrown the gun. They developed a device, a so database, called the Gans Matrix. I mean, even the name is not a the Gans Matrix is supposed to contain the names of London's most violent gangsters. Because what happened was they blamed the riots on the gangsters. Even though it is four a years ago, the Air Commission the said the gangsters had not organised no riots. Even though the Metropolitan Police of Weed said that gangsters had organised no riots, they carried on blaming the, the gangsters the as the modern motive. The they created a database called the, the Gangs Matrix. In Harringay, I came across both human. The first copy Dutton of the Gangs Matrix that we leaked from the police. Shot. I was really concerned when I saw the gas matrix. Anyone here know about Iron Gate? In 2014, the inquest concluded that the biggest gun in Iron Gate outside of the police happens to be a gas scene with Tottenham Turkish boys. Madmen, three names, and now they're all down Tottenham High Road and the Spurs. They're not madmen. If people in Tottenham who look like me when a real gun comes up to jam one of the shore can spray lots of bullets, you go to the Tottenham. The Tottenham Territory are real. So when I saw the Harry Day gang matrix and I saw there was a hundred names on there, and I had time to attack them with black boys, I thought, what the hell is going on here? Don't they know that the Tottenham Turks exist? But the Tottenham police know the Tottenham Turks exist because the only time that police in London have walked so routinely with carbine and machine guns was when the Tottenham Turks and the Hackney Bombardiers went to war in the late 1990s. So they know they exist. And we know they know they exist because when I got this gang's matrix, one name is Turkish. And they said, yeah, this dude here, he's associated with the Tottenham Turks, but he went to school with those black boys. To all policing with the black boys. Being on this list means, right, first of all, the list is completely algorithm driven. It grays people in red, amber, and green. You'd expect that this is a database of the most violent, 
regularly in the most violent, that most of the kids are in the And there are kids. Most of them are in their teens or their early 20s. And you would have thought that they'd have been all red. There's only six out of one hundred in the record. That's the baddest gangsters, and we know these kids. We don't want to mess with these kids. These kids are shut you, they don't care. Six. Then we had lots of them in Amber. Those ones in Amber, they have a record for violent crime. It's not necessarily gang-related, but they're on this gang register all the same. Then we found on the Harringay gang register that your sister's son of these officers said, Green means they're the right police violence, these are the right police violence, these are the right police violence. When we investigated what Green meant, there is no way no record of violent crime. 67 of them on this list, who were supposed to be the most dangerous gangsters in London. How did they get on there? Their friends are the ones in Amber. While V53 the said they, they go to school, the you are on the same estate as the ones in Amber and the ones in Red. This means that they're all policed the same, and we've had the police tell us this the is where they get the killing of your police. This is where they get the killing of These are all they brought in these violent reduction units. These kids, when they get these kids, they rock them. There are no rules with these kids. The gang members. Last year, the police gang unit went into my brother's home. I don't know if I'm sorry. They tasered my brother whilst on top of some stairs. He came down, they almost killed him. Red Shack, Red Shack 32. They almost killed him. They went and they tasered another unit when it was on top of a wall. He dropped out on the other side and he was paralyzed from the chest. Now, those of you who have been around my time know that when they brought in the tasers, they told us that armed police officers would use the taser and the taser was a preference to the gun. And of course, everyone would have been the taser as a preference to the gun. However, the taser should only be used if someone was attacking them. My brother is a top 60 odd year old man, a top skier. He wasn't attacking no one. Jordan Walker Brown was on the wall running away. He wasn't attacking no one. But now, in certain areas, there's certain there is no sign of any officer planting a fire. You're allowed to do anything to us. Last summer, when you saw black MPs, black lawyers, black police officers no being stopped and accosted by the police, it's because they were driving through these areas. There were areas in London like Tottenham and Hackney and Walthamstow and Newark where these areas are considered to be gang related areas. And if you happen to be black or Asian in those areas, you become a suspect. It doesn't matter what job you are, it doesn't matter who you are, once you're in those areas. Last week, I got to change my police. I got to change all the class. But I don't like that. Last week, the police abused me, so I took some, um, what do they call it, preemptive strikes. In the system, I got to get some good jabs. <laughs> well, when he took the jab, he was dumb. So people said to me, run. I'm like, I'm not running. Why should I run? Right? The police are going to come. When the police came, yo, they were so nice, I'm going to get arrested, I'm going to get detained in this place again. It was such a great experience. They came, they detained me, they didn't try to throw me on the floor, they didn't try to handcuff me, they talked to me. It was like, whoa, I'll come back and get this again. Because that doesn't happen in those gun places. The gun places, they put you on the floor, they handcuff you before they even tell you who they are and what they are. So there's a different style of policing. And what they do to these kids on the matrix, right, this, every car has it, there's 300, 800, and what we found, 300, 800 across London, and what we found out is 87% of them. Officer known as Q63 is identified. We are some so old, and this is London. What about the English guys? How many crappy gangsters are there in London? They say, oh, about four years Then we map the areas that we said, well, how many Chinese gangsters? They said, four. We said, not gangs, gangsters. Like within this reserve, behind the mini we got, um, I've got, got a report, we got the amnesty's right report, we got, report. We got a complaint to the Information Commissioner's Office. We the Information Commissioner sits above government, and the Information Commissioner has done an investigation into the creation of his matrix, but all they investigated was the police. And when they investigated the police, this was the outcome. They found that the police had no all privacy, all data, and all equality and legislation in setting up this racist database. They found that black children were on there in numbers that were disproportionate to their likelihood of a cause and offence. They found that this database claimed to have the names of baddest gangsters and also victims. How can you put gangsters and victims on one list and then police them all the same? When they're on this list, this is how it works. They look at you and they say, you three are a gang. Right? And when the police are, why do you commit to the same crime? You're coming for everybody. 
Imagine if you live on an estate and they've had five years in the Oh, you and me. My wife, 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 my in Harrington, oh, right, when we stopped them from bringing in Operation Shield, which they didn't bring into London, which was really about um, saying to young people, you feel a gang, if this one's a bit of a we're going to deal with you two, and it doesn't matter if you two were involved in the crime at all, we're just going to deal with you. When we stopped them from doing that, you know what they did? They wanted to be more punitive to the young people, so they said, right, stop you can stop us, what should we going to do? They called to the DVMA, and they said to the DVMA, yeah, Take away all their boys' licenses. And the DBA just did what they were asked. They took away all the licenses of the young little black kids in London, across London, who was on the matrix. The police said to them, oh, they spoke copious amounts of skunk weed and they're in gangs. And then the DBA wrote to the youth and said, you've been accused of smoking skunk weed. Run back your license. And if you want your license, you must take urine test. You have to do the blood test. They send them a sheet that says, when last did you take the When last did you take heroin? When last did you have the mazapan? It's so dehumanizing. It's unbelievable. All of these kids, most of these kids, don't have a care device. This creates, this creates in these kids a mindset that says it's us against the world. If they're treating us like this, we're going to be like this. It's all messing with you. I'll do them up. Because it's us. It's us against the world. And that's what fuels, that's what fuels the violence that we see out there. Young kids who are abused by the state can't fight that mistake, but everybody knows that the children are not This is what fuels the violence. They believe that what's happening to them is only happening to them. Q60 and then when I come along, or when you come along, when somebody who looks like them come along and steps on their toe, I'm not looking at because the frustration you go through. In my home, on the first day, my mom, my dad, my sister, 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 my but normally it's the kids who are volunteering because they're getting kicked out of school, they're being identified as any gangs anyway, they like chances, they're just cold. When the police hear that four or five of you are in the same gang and you live on one estate, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, they got everybody looking for gangsters, the caretakers looking for gangsters, they trust the caretakers looking for gangsters, but the caretakers telling the police gangsters. In 2018, Guess who identified the most gangsters in all the IPCC? The benefits cut. Now I want to know what skills, what training, what expertise people who work in a benefit of it have for identifying gangsters. The gun could have arrived in the past by the three years. It's not clear we wanted to show the gangs made it. But we were just showing it to boast that we were the one who identified it. Guess what? Because of what we did. We forced them, the mayor's office, to take off the names of 1,350 black men off of that racist name. But, 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 so these youths have been used to the most oppressive kind of policing imaginable. But they won't tell them no. We made a mistake. We won't do negotiate an financial assessment. With the metropolitan they want to leave them in the situation that they are, so that they will and still commit crime that and they can arrest them later. Presented our but why are we really telling them about the matrix? It's because we've just been becoming aware that there's a bill going through Parliament at the moment. It's called the Policing Crime Sentencing Court Street. And in that bill, there is what's called a duty to report. Now, what's a duty to report? Well, what is 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 a duty to report? So I showed you that man out there, he was a new one. Right, Boris Johnson. We now know where he is, he's the Prime Minister. All of what I just told you about the Matrix, he created with two different Prime Ministers. One was called Kit Moulkas, 
Who knows our names? The back know their names, and he's the minister of police right now. And that was called Stephen Greenberg. He's in the House of Lords. And then raised him an unelected minister of community. Now this means that we can't now complain to them, because he's the minister of community. The first news Those news people news the that are the the matrix are now in central government, and they've built the major style policing into the series, into the crime and policing bill that is going through Parliament at the moment. The serious youth violence that we've seen in Iraq in London has been an Iraq across the Outrage. They led a protest to the police station, is demanding answers. Our children for the As their anger went ignored, so this the protest is just became a confrontation, growing into the most remember widespread our, social unrest. The police violence and try to educate you about the stories that the mainstream media Over the tell. next four days, this five people lost their the lives and over 3,000 were arrested. We the when we get the start of the war, it's against, against the policing and crime bill. Doug was being monitored by Operation Trident, a controversial... And this ain't just about black people. We understand and we know that the impact of that fire is our own. These people are talking about building prisons for 20,000, for 20,000 places, and they're bringing through the legislation to ensure that those prisons are filled up. In England, the old right is in position. They kept on telling us to look at Trump while they were talking about the system. The old right is in position. And they're trying to create a system that is similar to America. Doug stepped out of the car. That and the officer known only as B-53 shot twice. from schools straight into the prison industrial complex that their friends own that are now the department. And injury of another officer known as W-32. My name is Stavros Stockton. I know those... B-53 later told investigators... Hi.